Good evening. I'm Repstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up on a wild news day. We'll get to all the things. And this is the 6th of February, 2024. All right, my friends. Well, first, and I think one of the big news events of the day, President Trump lost an appeal case, which means uh, he could be guilty as any citizen of trying to cause resurrection for the January 6th events. He will certainly appeal. That does not mean that the Supreme Court has to take the appeal up. They decide what they're going to take. Uh, and if not, that means he's got his hands full. Now, this changes things in the presidential race. And I know people won't talk about it, but it's reality. As he's got his hands full with that, if the Supreme Court doesn't step in and say, no, he was president and he's not liable, and he goes on to trial for that and gets found guilty, or the trial proceeds before the election and who knows what, the landscape starts changing on him. Will Nikki Haley start coming to contention? So what's going to happen is you watch. Big Republican money will very quietly get behind her and keep her in the race as the what if candidate. I'm not saying that she'll like me saying that, but that is the reality of the situation as to where it's at. As of right now, you know, the vast majority of Republicans are favoring uh, President Trump, but this could change things in a major, major way. And if it does, definitely the candidates there. And that changes the whole political landscape because one-on-one, -on -one, she does a pretty good job of going against President Biden as well. Wow. Um, Israel Hamas. It appears that uh, there has been a breakthrough and that both sides are seriously, I'm talking Israel and, uh, did I say Hamas? It, the, Israel and Hamas are agreeing. I was thinking Houthis in my head. How how these? Um, no, it's Israel and Hamas are seriously contemplating. Do they go for a proposed forty day truce, no firing or anything? Unfortunately, we are hearing word that as many out of the one hundred and thirty hostages, fifty are dead. So that's not going to be pretty. The question for. Uh, the Hamas seems to be how many uh, prisoners can they get released as they do this? And then what is the end game? And I think that is proper. I think everybody has to be asking, what is the end game? Are we just going to keep going at this at the end of 40 days? Or is this enough to say, everybody, breather time. What is the solution? Is there going to be a two-state solution out of this? Do we finally get to that point uh, in it? I don't know. I don't have any idea. Then we have massive amounts of economic data, as you can imagine. It just keeps coming. Earnings season is still here. You see great things like in Ford. You see not so great in Snap that came down today hard. Uh, Eli Lilly did, I think, very well, but the stock gave all the gains back and finished up near unchanged on the day. So we're looking at all this, and I think we're all scratching our head. And now you're starting to hear for the first time people saying, this is wonderful about tech, but it's been straight up. Is it going to keep going? All right. And that becomes the question mark. And is this market saying maybe it wants to take a small breather? I'll give you a warning. The futures tonight are steady to slightly lower and you're starting to falter in the bullish embedded readings. So the market is screaming. You either go up and stay up, but if you breathe a little, you lose those embedded readings, you could get your first corrections that come into the market. Concern. I think you got to be very concerned. Are you watching the numerous uh, Fed members that are talking? You are hearing over and over, and today I started hearing it and I wanted to hear it that the members are saying, what soft landing? Why, why are we talking that? What recession are you talking about? Labor's this strong. Wage growth is still there. This is the first response as we're getting to Friday's jobs report. What do you mean that there's a soft landing? Why? So the questions are coming in. And again, you get full employment, you get this many new jobs, and you ask that. And Others are analyzing what I brought up to you yesterday. You know, with all these layoffs we're hearing on corporations, the grand total that have been announced is approximately 32,000 jobs. Does that sound to you like waves of American out of work? No. Is this normal for corporations to call? Yep. 
Is technology have a lot to do with it? Yep. Is productivity going to drop? Nope. So that's where you're at with a lot of this. And those people will find jobs from private companies, smaller companies, and so on, if they want them. So getting a lot of that going on. Now, before I get to Lily, and I wanted to show you just what it did, it spiked up and how it gave that all back. And that's quite a bit to give back, by the way. I, I think $35 is a big amount to give back in one day from its spike higher. We have a lot of news for tomorrow. So maybe we take a look at that news before we get too far, and here we are. You got the Mortgage Bankers Association. We have US trade balance data. We get petroleum stocks at 9.30. Here's a number that I'll be focused on. You remember that the previous month, this is for December, in November, we had thought that consumer credit would be about $9 billion going up. It went to $23 billion in the expansion. Now they're looking for it to expand by another $14 billion. I keep reading how the consumer's falling behind on credit card and auto payments, up about 3.2%, uh, 3.1% of credit card issuing is falling in arrears. I'm concerned with that. And we have a number of Fed members speaking tomorrow. So you're going to get all that and you've got to deal with everything else that I just mentioned to you. And there's a lot there to deal with. So what do you do with it all? Well, the first thing that I'm seeing, and I'll come back. I don't mean to keep hitting that. I apologize. The first thing I'm looking at is, is the market getting to the point where it needs to correct a little bit here? I'm, and I'm not a top picker. If you know anything about my charting and you watch me, you know better than that. But I'm watching certain things. I, I was bothered today by Lily. Great news, the products are doing great. They've got so much in, in the channel here, the new liver drug, everything coming out. And it just came back there. This market acts like it wants to fill the gap that it left just the other day. So I'd be watching that. That's a weekly chart. On the uh, daily chart, let me make sure that's weekly. I say weekly, but that's daily. It didn't seem right to me. I've got two daily charts here and I apologize for that one says weekly. Is the market gonna fill the gap? I still think so. No surprise to me whatsoever there if that happens now. Is the chart bullish? Oh yes. You've got the market all lined up where you got the 200, the 100, the 18, but things do have a way of pulling back and you're over the Bollinger Band and you've been over it a couple of days in a row now. Now let me show you. You're over the band. Um, why don't we wait to get to it? And I can show it a little better when I get a little more information. This is what I wanted to get on the chart. So you got both numbers here over 80. The day before in the slow stochastic, the day before, which is Monday, both numbers over 80 and the day before over 80. So you have your embedded reading and this is what I'm leading you to. We've had all these days over the upper band. If the red line closes under 79, the odds favor, you're gonna get a challenge all the way down. And from here, that's a heck of a challenge, another $50. Not, and by the way, what would happen is the slope of the 18 day average would go up. And if you look right now, it's at 646. The day before the number was 641, the day before it was 637. So let's assume it's going up $5 a day tomorrow to be 650, then 655. Price and that number are likely to come together if we lose the embedded reading, a warning. That's what I'm putting out there to traders. When we look at the um, nuclear area, and that's what this is, that we're looking at nuclear energy. If this market takes out 47.32, I can make an argument that we're gonna go back to the lower Bollinger Band. It's got a hold right here and it's acting like it doesn't want to. So be careful. This could be a, a sign this market wants to correct. You've rallied back into resistance in the gasoline fund, but there's a lot of resistance between the 18-day average, the green, the 100, and the gray, the 200-day average. And if you take out today's low, you actually then get lower highs, you've got lower lows, you turn bearish. This is why all of a sudden you're hearing a change of attitude from me on what I'm seeing on the chart action. In XLF, you've got in place lower highs and higher lows. You reestablish that you want to come down a bit now. You lost the embedded reading already. 
All you need to do is take out 38.58, and I think then the challenge comes for the 18-day average fairly fast. Doesn't mean I'm right, but that's what I'm expecting. XLI, no, I'm not seeing it here. This is still a very bullish chart. It's one of the few that is still acting very strong. You'd have to get the red line to close under 79 to get me worried. Aha, big day in AMC. I have been following this because I am looking for a bottom. You lost your bearish embedded reading. I do think you're going back to the 421. And until this low is taken out, with what I know coming out now the for March 1st and other movies that are coming out, Dune and the like of that, be careful. This market probably wore its welcome out. You could be looking at a market that could surprise you a little bit on the upside just off the short covering. I don't know what the numbers will look like. I don't know how the movies will do when they come out. Nobody does. You can throw all the money you wanted a movie. What's this one? Argyle, is that it? Throw uh, all this money. What did it do? $18 million on the opening uh, weekend. It's a total flop. So you always got to look and be careful. But that chart action is a big warning to me. If I were short, I'd be scared now. RSPD, in looking at the market, overbought consumer part, I'd be careful here. I, I keep saying careful for the first time. Not aggressive bullish. Take out right here, 46.51, and all of a sudden you got lower highs, lower lows. You can open the door on this a little bit to the downside. In the home builders, now I, I, I think that this is gonna be just fine. They're still in the bull camp here. Resistance all the way up, but they don't have to go anywhere. They seem to want to hang in to the sideways action of the Bollinger Band. You do see how narrow they are, and it's like a pipe. The market's spinning. Well, it's waiting for interest rates. It's waiting for spring right around the corner. We are February 6th. Spring buying happens in three weeks. People start coming out in different parts of the country. Oh, God, we should get a house before the kids get out of school. We can get ourselves settled. I can go on and on. Rents are a little high. Maybe we can do something. How do we work that out? You know, you hear that. All that happens as I get older, the stories are the same. Uh, as we look at XLE, higher high, lower low, overbought. I'm not excited about the energy sector right there at all. Then we come over to the gold. Gold came alive. So to take me out of now my new enthusiasm for gold, you've got to take out yesterday's lows. And that low would be on this market um, right here at 186.70. If that came out, then I'd say, okay, I'm a little early. The market's not going anywhere. If it decides to move higher from here, well, the 190.05, the upper Bollinger Band, is a possibility. And the trend is up. The bias is what? Up. And the market had been pointing down. It looks like momentum's trying to turn and at least go flat. I, I can't say the same thing yet about silver. Now, I read a story today about silver as people are talking how undervalued silver is and is this the time for it to shine? And I, get, I understood the story. Silver is used in everything in electricity. Think about it. Silver has phenomenal use everywhere. But it's been known that it has phenomenal use everywhere, and we keep producing a lot of it, and it's still a $20 item. And I know people beat me up when you guys uh, uh, write me on uh, our YouTube channel, because uh, I say it's an industrial metal. You go, you don't understand. It's really a quasi-metal, a precious metal. It isn't. It's a $20 metal. What makes a metal precious is number one, scarcity, and you see that driven up in price. Platinum, palladium, gold. I can label those more in the precious metal category. I can't label copper where it's a, a three and a half, four dollar item, and I can't label silver at $20 an item like that either. That, that's just me. I think those two are industrial metals. And in the copper market, you can see the story here. And so China, nobody's buying the story that China's doing with their stock market. I hope you're not buying into that. Uh, you go in and you're the Chinese government. And the first thing you do is you cross, you cut off the channel, as they call it. If you sell in Hong Kong, you offset what you hold on the mainland. No, 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 we're not going to allow that now. You've got your stock, you've got a big holdings in certain stocks at your brokerage company on the mainland. Yesterday, the government says, the brokerage company will not authorize your order to liquidate those. Can't do that anything. Number two, you can't go short selling now. 
So that means there's one element left, and that's the government can come in and buy stocks that they said they were going to do, and that will drive the stock indices higher because there's no sellers. <laughs> and then President Xi comes out and goes, look at how our reforms are starting to grab hold. The stock market's realizing what's going on, and we're going up. I, this is not fiction. This is today what is going on. I don't mean yesterday or the day before. I mean today. This is what is going on. And the Chinese people realize it. They're probably fed up with it to a degree. But hey, if you're in China, that's the game that you have. So is the market going to try to find support here? It could, but it doesn't have a story just yet. That's the problem. Uh, BND, well, that jobs report, you're, we're still trying to grasp air from the jobs report on Friday. And you, it's the first bounce in the market since we had the report. The dollar, no, nah, you don't buy Bollinger Bands. At least that's what I teach. You could buy them, but I think you got a resistance point. You're getting into overbought territory here and oversold in this. So what do you do right now? Well, I, I think you get nervous. That's the first thing. I think this rally, as I said, I'm watching the futures. They cannot afford, from my perspective, does not mean I'm right, by the way. From my perspective, they cannot afford to be down tomorrow. If they are, I think you get a bigger correction than you think. I wish I could tell you that it's more than technical. It isn't. I don't see anything wrong with the economy. But after these many weeks up, things just happen to fall that way. And I'm on, I'm on top of it, looking at it in a big manner. Another thing I'm on top of is trying to give you things you could use in your trading. This page slides down. There's quite a bit here. At the top of it, if you move your mouse, you'll see an icon, click on it. All you do is click on the blue areas of any of the offerings we have, we mail them right to you. Now I'll do my best very shortly to start doing some special reports. I'm still recording my charting course. My son came in, been out of town for a year and a half, nearly two years, and I was gonna finish the course up right now, but I'd rather spend some time with him. I'll get to the course I recorded today. So I'm back into the swing of it, and he's going out for a few days, so I'll be able to really catch up as he goes visit some friends in the Midwest. But uh, nice to see family when you haven't seen him, and he lives in the middle of California. It's 12 hours from Chicago to go see him. So it's hard for me to do that. So I hope you appreciate that for those of you that want that new course. I'm Ira. You have yourself a great day. irapstein.com, free offers. Move your cursor there. I'll see you tomorrow.